My name is Ukyun, and I'm a PhD student from KAIST. I, will, I am going to introduce our paper, Enhancing Memory Error Detection for Large-Scale Applications and Fuzz Testing. This is the joint work from KAIST, Purdue University, and University of California, Riverside. Memory error is one of the most representative vulnerabilities, so four among 10 worst vulnerabilities of the last 10 years are from memory errors. Heart bleed, shell shock, GLIPC stack buffer overflow, and config error are from memory errors. These memory errors can lead to information leakage, privilege escalation, and remote code execution. To detect such memory errors, two approaches have been introduced. Firstly, for pointer-based approach, there are softbound CETS and Intel MPX. Intel MPX is supported by hardware, but it cannot detect temporal memory errors. Also, they still have challenges to support complex applications, like browsers. Another approach is resume-based approach, and the address sanitizer is the representative work. And the address sanitizer is comparable to complex applications, and it is most popular in practice. It can be adapted to Chrome, Firefox, and Linux kernel. Also, fuzzers like AFL, Cluster Fuzz, and OSS Fuzz utilize the address sanitizer to find the memory bugs. Resume-based approach focuses to detect two kinds of memory errors. Firstly, special memory errors like a forward flow. The other one is temporal memory errors like UCF3. Firstly, I will introduce how they detect special memory errors. They use shadow memory, which has compressed information to validate the all virtual addresses. And before accessing certain address, they check the corresponding shadow memory before the access. To detect special memory errors, all objects ex exist between the red zone, which are inaccessible region. So access to the red zone can be detected since corresponding shadow memory is invalid. Resume-based approach also can detect temporal memory errors like use after free. They use quarantine zone to hold the object for a while before deallocating it. When an application requests to free an object, the region is invalidated and quarantined but not actually deallocated. So access to the region can be detected since the corresponding shadow memory is invalid. The quarantine zone holds the region until the quarantine zone is full. After that, the region is actually deallocated and can be allocated to a new object. However, there is a couple of limitations for resume-based approach. Firstly, if a pointer access beyond the red zone, it cannot, it cannot be detected because shadow memory is valid, and it can cause special memory errors. And also, access from, access from dangling pointer can be detected for a while. However, after a new object is allocated in the region, it cannot be detected, and it can cause temporal memory error. So, address sanitizer cannot detect these cases. From the observation, to enhance detection capability of a red zone-based approach, first we need a large gap between objects to detect special memory errors. Secondly, we need a large quarantine zone to detect temporal memory errors. But just increasing the gaps and the quarantine zone requires a lot of physical memory. To solve those problems, we introduce our system MEDS, which enhances detection capability of resume-based approach. 
the idea of MED is to fully utilize 64-bit virtual address space to support large gap and large quarantine zone. Our approach to minimize physical memory use is utilizing page aliasing and page protection. For further optimization, we use hierarchical memory error detection mechanism. To support large gaps between objects, we use page aliasing. Page aliasing is that it maps multiple virtual pages to a single physical page. And we can use at least one virtual page for an object. So but with page aliasing, objects can be comp compactly placed in the physical memory area while they are sparse in the virtual memory area. So with page aliasing, resolution itself does not occupy any physical memory. To further optimize the physical memory use, we use page protection mechanisms supported by the operating systems. And there are many resolution-only pages between those two object pages. And we, we reserve them, but keep them a map to any physical page. So resolution-only pages do not occupy shadow memory and physical memory. To support large quarantine zone, we utilize both page aliasing and page protection mechanism. When deallocating an object one, we simply unmap the virtual corresponding virtual page and the virtual page will not be reused until all virtual pages are exhausted. Since we have much larger, much larger space in virtual space, so either we reduce rate late. And to minimize physical memory use, the deallocated region in the physical memory can be reused by another object with page aliasing. So object X can be allocated to the region that was used by object one. So we reuse, we reuse physical memory immediately while not reusing virtual page address. So the quarantine zone does not occupy physical memory. To further optimize physical memory use, we use our hierarchical memory error detection mechanisms. We have many different ways to represent the red zones. Firstly, we can check the value of the shadow memory. This is the traditional red zone based approach. Second one is we can check, we can, the red zone only pages are unmapped to any physical page. So access to the pages can be protected by the operating system. Finally, when deallocating an object, we not only unmap the corresponding virtual page, we, but also we unmap the corresponding shadow memory page. So when checking the shadow memory, it is detected by the page protection mechanism. We to evaluate our system match, we have configured our red zone size and quarantine zone size as the table describes. Addresses sanitizer cannot use the configuration because it suffers auto memory error. We evaluated comparability, performance, and detection with fuzz testing for MAD. Briefly, it can detect more crashes even though it is slower. To evaluate comparability of MADS, we perform the unit tests from real world applications. We use test cases from Chrome, Firefox, and Nginx, and MADS can run all of those cases. Also, we conducted the memory error unit tests from Address Sanitizer and Juliet Test Suite provided by NIST. We can pass all the test cases except random memory access tests from the Juliet. We ran many times for those cases and found that address sanitizer can detect only about a third. However, we can find 
almost all the runs. Before evaluating the overall performance of a match, we measured some numbers that can affect to the overall performance. Firstly, we measured the number of TFA misses. Since we use more virtual pages for page aliasing, those maps have five times more TLB miss than address sanitizer. Secondly, we measure the number of system calls. Because we use MMAP, MMAP, and MREMAP system call for page aliasing and page protection, so we have 32 times more system calls than address sanitizer. Also, we use more physical memory, about 218% than the baseline and 68% than the address sanitizer. However, we can have much larger red zone and quarantine zone to enhance the detection capability. Here is the overall performance overhead compared to the baseline and the address sanitizer. We have 108% overhead compared to the baseline and 86% compared to the address sanitizer. For those three cases, we have reasonable overhead, 41% of the baseline and 22% of the address sanitizer. However, for final case, we have over 200% overhead and it used, the reason is that they use large number of small objects on the stack. Because we explicitly migrate the stack object to the heap space, so we can have more overhead. We perform the first testing to, to see match is efficient for finding bugs. We ran AFL to detect unique crashes. So in result, despite the performance overhead, we can explore about 70% more unique crashes than other sanitizer. For those seven cases, MEDS finds more unique crashes in initial phase, but the number of unique crashes is saturated in the end. Here is an example for saturation. We measure the number of unique crashes with time spent. MEDS is saturated after three hours, and address sanitizer can find unique crashes that MEDS already found. But MEDS is faster in terms of the detection and it can detect the cases that other sanitizer cannot detect. So let me explain how MEDS explores more unique crashes than other sanitizer. Firstly, since we have much larger red zone size and quarantine zone size, we have more input sets that can trigger certain bugs. This, these examples are simplified version from rear. So, MEDS have more number of X that can trigger the special memory errors. So, we have much higher probability to detect the bugs and bugs can be found earlier than the other sanitizer. And after that, further can focus on the other paths to explore another unique crash. Secondly, match can detect the cases that other sanitizer cannot detect. For example, it, there is case that always bypass the red zone size of the other sanitizer. So when we miscalculate the index, access to the certain element of the structure will always bypass the red zone. And other sanitizer cannot detect this case. In conclusion, we proposed our system MED to support large gap and large quarantine zone while minimizing physical memory use by utilizing page aliasing, page protection, and hierarchical memory error detection. So in result, despite the overhead, MED finds more unique crashes during the first testing. And we are going to open source this MED 
and it will be available soon in the repo. And please use it to detect memory bug. Thank you for listening. Do we have uh, any questions from the audience? <laughs> okay, so uh, again, uh, let me kick off the uh, discussion by asking a very quick question. Uh, from the result, it, it, uh, it looks like uh, the memory overhead, especially the, the footprint, uh, yeah. is kind of larger than I expected, because uh, as you explained, uh, although you do page aliasing, but uh, uh, the, uh, the physical memory is not yeah. uh, uh, really expensed. Uh, in addition to uh, the, the, the memory object, objects, right? So c can you please explain? Actually, Redstone itself does not occupy physical memory, but corresponding shadow memory occupies the physical memory. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have any, any more questions? Uh, if not, this concludes our session for, uh, for this session, and thank you again for attending, and uh, let's give another round of applause for the speakers in this session. Thank you.